We are Expedition Overland. We travel the world and share our stories. This new series allows more of us to tell those stories as we leave the comforts of a convoy life for the challenges of single truck exploration. First up, to take on the challenge is Richard and Ashley Giordano. Richard and Ashley have traveled the world and they've spent almost two years on the road between Central and South America alone. But there's still a little gap in their Pan American story, the very northern part of Canada. They've been on the team for the last two years now, and it's time for them to stretch their story wings and take on the Great White North in the all new Arctic Solo Series. No. They will leave in March, a little over a month from now. So for us back here in Montana, at the X-Overland headquarters, known as the X-Hangar, we have our work cut out for us. Fellow team member Tanner Johnson and I are going to prepare the Tacoma, known as X-3 Meridian, for the extremes ahead. The truck has gone through some amazing things over the last few years, from the McKinsey Trail, South America, and our Overlander series. But this trip into the north will be its biggest challenge. The cold is brutal and makes metal weaker and plastics brittle. There's a lot to consider when preparing a rig for such an adventure. Join us as new teams tackle the unknown. X Overland Solo Series is presented by General Tire and the Grabber ATX, the official tire of the Arctic Series, available at TireRack.com and in association with Patriot Campers and P-Core Systems. So the Giordanos have decided to do something crazy awesome and go to the Arctic in March to complete their Pan American story, essentially, I guess. They've been able to spend a year in Central America, roughly, a year in South America, and even though they're from Canada, they've never gone all the way up and reached the end of the highway in Alaska or Canada. So uh, they're going to head up to Inuvik. We decided, yep, that's a great story. And Tanner and I will help you do it in the X3 Meridian, our 2016 Tacoma. It has been pulled out of a little bit of a break. Yeah. They went to Mexico last year and it really hasn't done anything more since. So now we're gonna upfit it and make sure that it is all ready to go to, I don't know, 300 miles above the Arctic Circle in the middle of winter. We are performing a long list of upgrades and preventative measures to prepare the truck for the upcoming extremes. We start with all new fluids to ensure optimal performance in the cold. We're going the extra mile and install a new belt, all new plugs, amber fog light covers, and new headlight bulbs to be on the safe side, now that the truck is right at 50,000 miles. A remote start is installed so Rich and Ash can start the truck from bed on those cold mornings. Tanner installs a WeBoost antenna to help Richard and Ashley to be able to stay online and post updates of their upcoming trip on social media. Since the Giordanos are solo, we are going to great lengths to maximize their communication capabilities. So, it's time for a field test. We have full internet. Yep. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Sweet. So yeah, I'm out here north in a low spot on uh, the road, on Pass Creek Road, and it went from no service at all like I couldn't even send a text to you, turned it on, waited a few minutes, and now I have two bars of LTE. Sweet. Literally from couldn't even send a text to now we can FaceTime. So that's pretty dramatic. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna head on back now. After a successful test, Tanner is now installing a solar panel to X3. This panel is managed by the Red Arc Manager 30 in the back of the truck. A solar panel can keep batteries topped off if needed, without having to run the truck. It's just another layer and tool at their disposal, should they need it. Now it's time to sort some propane fittings and test the current heating system in the habitat. We're not sure if it's up to snuff. 
Well, it is cold today. It's actually one of our first coldest snowy days since the new year. And we decided it's gonna be a great time to test the living systems and the heaters and everything before Richard and Ashley go up to Tuck. We have this nifty thermal imaging camera from Clay's search and rescue gear that we're gonna look and see where the weaknesses are and how bad it is and see if there's anything we can do to improve it. So let's go ahead and get it all shut up here and we'll see how we can do. After Tanner fires up the current heater system, we let it run for about two hours in the cold. Oh yeah, It's not Thanks. that warm in here. I mean, the edge is taken off, but... Yeah. That's pumping out hot air, but... If I'm in the yard, I can tuck tuck, like I'm sitting right here. Yeah. You know? You know, it's two hours it's been running. The cabinets are still cold. The fridge yeah, is it's... cold. You know, there's a lot of metal in here, but it's pumping out 144 degree, 140 degrees Fahrenheit coming out of the heater. Which isn't bad, it just isn't enough. It's not enough. So I think we gotta look at the Wabasto. They can run their heater indefinitely without worrying about compromising this fuel source. I think we should look at that. Let's do it. Okay, coming out, going inside, going to the hot tub. <laughs> at this current burn rate, the Giordano's would be going through about a 10 pound tank of propane every night. That's a huge expense and a travel time killer to constantly be refueling propane. We need to look for a different solution for a trip of this caliber. After ordering some parts from Wabasto, Tanner receives the special package on our first snow day of February. We're just one month out from departure. Oh, well, hello there. Well, that's an exciting surprise to get this morning. Today's plan, if it all goes well, we'll see is to use some of this steel I just picked up to mount our five gallon fuel cell underneath the Tacoma, which is going to supply diesel for this dude. The plan is to get that mounted in time for our guys from Obasto that are coming to help us install it. Ah, there it is. So here's our fuel cell. We're gonna redo some of the brackets and hopefully it'll go well. We'll bring you guys along to see how it goes. Tanner and I decided to go with diesel for the heating system because the fuel source was recommended for us in the cold. We put the diesel filler on the opposite side of the gasoline filler. This will help remind the driver when fueling up to not put the wrong fuel in the back. That sort of thing could happen when really tired and cold it's a bit of a hassle, but it could save either system from a catastrophic mistake. Adding a diesel tank is a big commitment, kind of like adding a snorkel. But this is a dedicated truck heading out on a very dedicated trip, so it's going to be worth it. Huh, this has been a project. I thought it would be a pretty simple bracket system to mount the fuel cell, but it's been kind of turning into a bit of a headache, so I'll show you where we're at. It's all mocked up on top of this bracket here that I fabricated yesterday. The filler nozzle is gonna be coming out the side of the tank here over into the fender. I'm feeling better about it. And I think the next step is we're going to bedline it. Oh boy. Okay, so I just got done bedlining the tank and the brackets. Very happy with how it turned out. So now I'm just gonna let them cure, and once they're cured, probably get it all bolted up. Tanner and I decided to have a split wall made from our local upholstery shop so we could keep the heating spaces to a minimum. It hangs from the middle of the habitat and can isolate the sleeping area from the bed of the truck. 
We will then plumb a special heater pipe to fit up here and provide direct heat to the sleeping area. Well, good morning. Today is a big day. Well, Bosto has answered the call, literally. We put out this request on Facebook, our Facebook uh, Overlander community page, and we're asking questions about how other people have heated their habitat systems, told them the situation, and uh, Chip at Wabasto actually is an overlander and saw our request and got Wabasto involved and today they're coming into the shop and we're going to install a new Evo 40 heater system that runs on diesel and it should be the answer for the cold weather in the Arctic. It's pretty cool how Wabasto answered the call for the mission. Mike is the lead tech at Wabasto. He's the guy that teaches all the other Wabasto guys how to install their units. It's pretty comforting knowing that we had the very best installing this potential life-saving heater. The output of the Propex heater was 6,500 BTUs per hour, but the Airtop Evo 40 is three times that at 18,800 BTUs per hour. Currently we have the heater mounted. It's mounted to the foam gasket. Everything is sealed off. So now no combustion gases can come up inside the vehicle or on the home stretch. It's running the fuel line, Mike. Yep, fuel line is routed, fuel filter is mounted. Okay, so we got fuel in the system. So what are you doing now, Mike? I have a function that's called fuel priming. So we want to get fuel all the way up to the heater. So I'm going to start with just a basic 60 second fuel time, fuel filling time, and hit start. Mike explains to Tanner and I how the software runs through an extensive set of safety checks before he can say that the unit is ready to go. This is one of the biggest selling points for a Wabasto system. After all, you're living with it inside of a truck. It needs to be safe. Okay, so we just did our first test run on the Wabasto. It worked great, fired up. Mike's been doing an amazing job installing it. It's time to say goodbye to the Wabasto guys. Thank you, Mike, for coming all the way to Montana to help with our installation. It's awesome to know that a company's got your back. And now it's time for us to take the X3 outside and give it a shakedown. All right, so it's the next day after the Wabasto install. It's pretty cold. It's about the same temperature as it was about a month ago when we did the test on the old system. So let it cool off, start it up, and see how it does. All right, so I'm just gonna crank it and just see how hot I can get it in here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's been 15 minutes and it's already gone from about 13 degrees in here to 40 degrees in 15 minutes. So a lot of nice hot air pumping up into the tent from our removable ducting here. It goes up into our tent area with the door shut and then a ton of air coming out of the main vent down here. It's just blasting hot air. So far it's a big difference over the old Propex propane system. Not only in just volume of air but the temperature it's putting out. And we're not running our propane so they're going to be able to conserve that for their stove. So win-win. Now that we know that the heating system is up to par for the north, the Tacoma is nearly prepped and ready from Tanner and I's perspective. We just need our beloved Canadians to arrive to finish the prep for the long journey north. All right, we're almost at the Crofts place. Yeah. Excited to check out the Tacoma. Um, Tanner's been sending me all sorts of text messages with updates. Nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to check out the amazing heating system the have at sauna temperatures while we're in the Arctic. Yes. It's really cool. Yeah, last I checked the temperature up in Tuck was minus 30 Celsius. So, <laughs> with wind chill, I'm sure. No, minus 41 with wind <laughs> chill. We're here. We made it. Alright, feels good to be here after, what was that, eight hours? Nine hour drive? Plus. Feels like a million? Yeah. Already started. Tanner and I go over the new additions we have made with Richard and Ashley. We spool them up on the new WeBoost antenna, the SAT phone, and InReach. 
and then onto the Wabasto system. But there's more work to be done. Thankfully, we now have some extra hands. We are privileged to install a brand new product from Goose Gear for this trip. It's a rear seat delete drawer system. This will replicate how our other production trucks work with the ability to have Richard's camera gear at just an arm's length from the charging system at the side of the habitat. It's a bomber system and it's set up for maximum efficiency. Next up is our tire selection, a major decision for any trip, especially one like this. Well, for years now, we've been sponsored by General Tire and uh, happily so, honored to be sponsored by General Tire because they frankly make phenomenally good tires. Uh, the ATX is their latest and uh, it has been our go-to winter tire now and it performs phenomenally in the snow. It does other things well too as an all-terrain tire as we've run it throughout the whole year. Um, there's a couple things, great harmonics, lightweight, very good siping built in. Siping it has a major impact on uh, snowy roads and ice, allowing the rubber to grip the surface of the road and flex and get traction. On top of that, it's a studded tire. I've studded these for the winter. And uh, I have no worries that this tire will perform perfectly for them. To this date, we have never had any failure on the ATX. All right, let's get mounted up. Richard and I at one point had talked about going with a bigger tire. You know, for better float capabilities, it would look cooler, etc. But we made the choice to stick with the 285-70R17s or approximately the 33 inch tire. This size has performed extremely well in all of our other expeditions. And for the most part, we think that they will be running on dirt and plowed roads. Plus going with a larger size would have decreased fuel range and up north in the winter, that's a pretty big factor. Tanner and I check the worn winch to make sure it is in tip top shape, just in case Ashley and Richard get stuck in the snow or they come along somebody who needs their help. To help out with the fuel range, we installed a long range automotive tank just last summer. This increased the fuel capacity from 21 gallons to 31 gallons gave us a range boost of 150 miles per tank, which can make a huge difference where winter commonly closes seasonal fuel stations. Or, in the event, a road is closed and the truck would need to turn back. It would ensure that it has enough fuel to do so. Slowly working through our packing list here. Just trying to make sure that we have absolutely everything we need in this one truck and that it fits, it fits in the right spot. So it's nice and easily accessible. Currently, I am overwhelmed, but in a good way. So, we <laughs> have a few days left to go. This will all work itself out one little piece at a time. Tanner, are you gonna come with us or what? Yeah. I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna soak in the hot tub. <laughs> so we're bringing a smaller pared down med kit on this trip, just for the two of us. And so I referenced my master first aid kit list from the Great Pursuit here. And so we basically just like went through item by item to see what we needed and what we didn't need. And uh, yeah, and we've got a great first aid kit here, ready to go. Food is also a major consideration on a trip like this. And Ashley has it dialed. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about food prep and what we did to get ready for our Arctic trip. Um, I guess this trip is a little bit different just because of the weather obviously and the climate. And so I actually wanted to do a lot of um, home cooked comfort food. I prepped four recipes ahead of time. A couple, a few, I think it was a few soups and a chili and Tanner very thoughtfully provided us with some pork as well. Um, and I just froze them. So they're really easy to heat up while we're on the road. This looks like this basically. And we can heat it up super quick. <laughs> Easy to prep, doesn't take a lot of time. We don't want to be standing outside uh, cooking in minus 30 degrees Celsius. And so healthy, super quick, nice and warming, comfort food for the road. Here is our tool kit for this trip. Normally what I like to do is have a toolbox dedicated to the truck, whatever truck it is. In this case, I just grab wrench, wrench set, socket set, um, 
I have a couple of large adjustable wrenches just in case, hammer, paracord, zip ties, and a full electrical kit just in case we need to repair anything on the road. Other things that we brought are some spare parts that if they fail, they leave us stranded. So if we need any of those things on the road, we've got them in the truck ready to go. Richard and Ashley pack up the truck and prepare the X3 for departure, but there's still one finishing touch. As with any trip, there comes a point when you can't prepare anymore. You just simply need to push off and get the tires rolling. Richard and Ashley are to head out to the extreme north to Tuktoyaktuk in the Northwest Territories of Canada, located on the frozen coast of the Arctic Ocean. It's bound to be an epic adventure, but you will just have to wait and see. So join us next time on Solo.